Hi, my name is Kelly. I'm going to be demonstrating the perfusion part of a VQ test. What the perfusion part of the test does is it shows the blood flow in the lungs. Um, this is compared to the ventilation portion of the test, which shows the airflow. The doctor looks at both of these images and compares them to see if there might be a pulmonary embolism, and if they think so, it also gives them an anatomic region of where the embolism might be. I have my patient Jake here, who has just completed his ventilation portion of the test. So now we'll move right into the perfusion. As you can see, the patient is still supine. You want them to be laying down while you give them the injection. It's a small amount of a radioactive tracer. Um, it's actually very small particles, so you want to make sure and agitate the syringe before you inject it. You'll inject it through a butterfly needle or an existing IV line in the arm or hand, whatever's accessible. After the patient is injected, you can move right into the imaging portion of the test. To get a good view of the lungs, you will want the patient's arms out of the way. Will you please raise your arms? Get them in a position where it will be comfortable for them to hold their arms like this for about 15 minutes. Okay, so I've got my patient in position. This is a little bit easier than the ventilation portion because they are already injected. You will be able to see their lungs on the screen. So on your P-scope, you just want to make sure that you have all of the lungs included in your field of view. You don't want to cut off the top or the bottom or either side. Now the first picture we take is of the front and the back. So you want to get the camera heads as close as you can to get a real good picture. Now that my cameras are nice and close to my patient and my whole lungs are in the field of view, I can start my image. This image will run for about five minutes, maybe less. Um, once this image is done, we'll move the cameras away and move into our next set of image. Now that I've moved the camera heads away from the patient, I can now turn it to our next position where we will look from the side, uh, from the front side of one lung and from the back side of the other. For these angled pictures, you can start at a 45 degree angle, but you will want to check your screen to make sure you have a nice separation between your right and left lung. Once you get a good angle that shows the lungs in a good oblique view, then you can bring the heads in again and begin your picture. I'm going to skip that and just show you the next view we would take. So if we go a little more around the circle, now we can take lateral pictures of the lungs. Not every place will do lateral pictures, but some do. And again, you would move the camera heads in close to the patient and hit start. I'm going to show you the last view we will take. And this would be our last view, taking an oblique picture of the front of the other lung and of the back of the other lung that we missed. We would again bring the heads in close, take our image, 
move them out and then we're done. So now I'll pull my patient out. Let them relax their arms as soon as they can. They're often sore from holding them up that long. Now before you let the patient go, it's important that you get your study read by a radiologist first. If this patient does turn out to have a pulmonary embolism, that's not somebody that we want to let go without treating first. Okay, so this is a raw image. This is our anterior view. So when you're putting the patient in to position them, this is uh, what you might see on the P-scope. So it's easy to tell that you have um, all of the top of the lungs in and if, to make sure that you're not missing any of the bottom. You can also see on the sides are both in there. Um, now we'll have an image like this for each view we took. We had four positions, but we were taking two pictures each. So we really have eight images that look like this. Um, to present them to the doctor, you put them together on a screen and you do some labeling. You label the views. Um, here we have all eight and also the dose patient information that we have blocked out here. And this is what the doctor will look at in comparison to the ventilation images to try and see some segmental defects and determine if a pulmonary, pulmonary embolism is there.